So, it's probably not going to come as a huge shock to you that two of the most popular tablet choices for university students are the Apple iPad and the Microsoft Surface Pro. However, what is surprising is how different these two tablets really are. The iPad is a tablet that has gotten more laptop-like over time, and the Surface Pro is a laptop that has gotten more tablet-like over time. In this video, I'm going to go over several of the different considerations you should keep in mind when choosing between a Surface Pro and an iPad as an engineering student, so that those of you that are undecided make the right choice. And with that, let's just get started. All right, so the first consideration is the operating system that is used on both devices, and that would be iPadOS on the iPad and Windows on the Surface Pro. For starters, iPadOS is basically a slightly altered version of the operating system that Apple has built for its iPhones, but now it's got some unique capabilities that's built specifically for the iPad, like multitasking. Although with this comes some limitations, like the restricted functionality imposed on some of the mobile versions of apps. There has been a lot of discussion in the past on how the mobile versions of the Word, Excel, and PowerPoint apps work on the iPad, but I feel pretty confident in saying that as an engineering student, the types of assignments and projects you're going to be creating in the big scheme of things are pretty simple and aren't going to need a specific function that's only available on the desktop version of these apps. Although something I do want to mention here is that you can't split screen two different windows of the OneNote app. So if you were thinking about using OneNote to take notes on the iPad, when you want to go back and look at your rolled notes, you will have to switch back and forth between pages because you can't have them open side by side. On the other hand, the Surface Pro, because it acts like a normal laptop, you can have as many windows open as you'd like and you can position them wherever you'd like on the screen as well. And this is actually pretty useful because it's pretty likely that you will run into a case where you will want to have open more than just two windows. And on the Surface Pro, you'll have this option. Another common scenario that happens as a student is that as you're watching the live or recorded lecture, you want to switch to another app while the video is playing so that you can check something you've done in a previous assignment or even just quickly Google something. Now when you go to do this on an iPad, you're going to have to leave the app you're watching the video on and it's very likely that it's going to stop playing, which is really annoying. While on the surface, you can just have this window off to the side and in view, and it will continue to play while you navigate around to other windows on your computer. Now also, I will just point out that this doesn't happen to every app on the iPad, but it is something to be aware of. This isn't something that's a big issue when you're watching a recorded video, but when you're watching a live video, this is pretty annoying because you do miss out on those things that are being said while you're jumping around to other windows. All right, the second consideration I have for you is how compatible both devices are with engineering programs. As an engineering student, you get access to a bunch of different programs that you're able to download onto your personal computer through a special student license. And because the Surface Pro runs on the Windows operating system, you really shouldn't run into an instance where you can't get a program on your computer. But on the other hand, because the iPad runs on the iPad OS operating system, it's very unlikely that you'll be able to get some of these programs on your device. In some areas of engineering, particularly those that use a lot of coding programs, you may be able to scrape by by just having an iPad, but I think it's very unlikely. For me, having access to these programs whenever I needed them without having to go to a computer lab or a library is something now I would definitely prioritize more as you never know when the world might shut down again and you won't have access to a computer lab or a library and then you'll be stuck without these programs. And although Surface Pros aren't well known for their computing power, I found that for all the design programs I was using on the Surface Pro I had at university, it performed perfectly fine for those relatively small projects. A few of the programs I used on my Surface were AutoCAD, Space Gas, Strand 7, and Plaxus 2D. Now in the iPad's defense, if you were able to get the program you needed for uni on it, I'm sure it wouldn't have any trouble at all running it, now that all the newer iPads are housing M1 chips. All right, and number three is the note taking experience. And generally speaking, the iPad has a lot more flexibility in this regard because there are a bunch of different note taking apps you can download from within the app store. And on the Surface Pro, you're probably just gonna have to go with OneNote because from my experience, it functions the best and there aren't a lot of competitive alternatives. Now, in terms of how it feels to take notes on both of these devices, in my opinion, the iPad is the smoother experience. It's quicker, it's more responsive, and rarely has any issues with any lag. But then there's also the consideration of how the pen works with each device. The Surface Pro Pen has two buttons, one on the end and one on the side, and the Apple Pencil doesn't have any buttons, but it does have a tapping center near the tip on the side. On the Surface Pro Pen, the button on the side acts a little like a left mouse button, and it's especially useful inside of note-taking apps. Inside note-taking apps, by pressing and holding this button, you're able to lasso your notes and easily move them around, and you don't realize how useful this button is until it's gone. With the Apple Pencil, when you want to lasso something, you've got to go up to the menu bar, click lasso, circle the thing you want to move, move it, 
then go up and click pen and then you can start writing again. I found this extra step of having to go up and click different buttons in the menu bar really annoying and something I definitely prefer about the Surface Pro range. Also with the Surface Pro pen, I wanna mention that the end of it actually acts like an eraser inside of note taking apps. So again, you can quickly access a function without having to go up to the menu bar and manually select it. Now I know on an Apple Pencil, you can double tap the side of it to quickly get access to the eraser, but I personally feel that turning the pen around and using the end of it as an eraser is a lot more natural and less exhausting than constantly having to double tap the side to switch between the pen and the eraser. Okay, and the other thing I can't go without mentioning is the kickstand on the back of the Surface Pro. And when you're taking notes, this thing is so useful. It's really sturdy and doesn't move unless you put a lot of pressure on the screen. And it's also super handy at moving those annoying ceiling classroom lights off your screen from reflecting into your eyes and also finding a really comfortable position for your hand to write on the screen. Now the iPad obviously doesn't have a kickstand on the back, but there are cases you can buy that are very similar to the kickstand on the back of Surface Pros. And one for example is the Combo Touch that's made by Logitech. All right, and number four is work device versus consumption device. And that's basically the feeling that both devices give you and what effect this has on what you're trying to use it for. Now in this scenario today, we're talking about a device that's gonna be used to do uni work. So you wanna get something that gets you in the headspace of it's time to do some work. Okay, so I definitely think that both the iPad and the Surface Pro are capable of giving you this feeling, but I definitely think it depends on whether you're disciplined enough to majority of the time only use the device for uni. Now going further into that, I think that the Surface Pro, because it's got more of a laptop feel to it whereas an iPad has more of a phone feel to it it would be better at putting me in the headspace of it's time to do some work whereas when you're in that phone environment it feels super casual and that you're only here to do menial tasks I think this is because similar to a phone on an iPad it's very easy to download non-uni apps and to be encouraged to use the device for other things like gaming social media and streaming services although I think if you can be strategic about staying off these apps and turning off notifications while you're doing uni work it be a lot easier in your mind to make the distinction between work mode and relax mode when using an iPad. All right, and finally, I wanted to finish this video by making it a bit more personal and pose you with some questions to ask yourself. And the first one is, is this gonna be your only device or do you have another computer that you use at home? Potentially, if you just wanna use this device purely for note taking, then an iPad is the way to go. Because if you already have a computer or laptop at home that runs Windows on it, and you can get all those extra design programs that you're not able to get on an iPad on it, then an iPad could be a really great accompanying device. But on the other hand, if you're looking for an all-in-one device that does the laptop stuff great and the tablet stuff good, then a Surface Pro could be the way to go. Another question to ask yourself is what device do you currently have and what functions on that device do you use a lot? Say for example, you're in the Apple ecosystem and you use things like AirDrop to transfer your files and iCloud to back up everything. Do you still wanna be able to use these things moving forward or are you happy to let them go and move to Windows? This isn't to say that you can't access iCloud files on a Windows computer, but it isn't nicely integrated like it is on an Apple device. The alternative on a Windows computer would be something like OneDrive. And the last one is, what do you really want? The last thing you wanna be is unhappy with what you choose. Often I've found when choosing between two good options is that if I just choose the one I simply like more, I won't be too worried about making the wrong decision because some particular task would have been easier with the other device because at least if I have to jump through extra hoops, I get to do it on the device I like more. All right, so there you have it. That was my take on some of the thoughts and considerations you should make as an engineering student when choosing between an iPad and a Surface Pro. Also, if you're interested in learning about how I used the Surface Pro while I was at university, check out this video I made here. And if you wanna find out how I organize my notes as an engineering student, both in OneNote and on my computer, check out this other video I made here. Okay, that's it guys. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.